In the pre-dawn darkness in what's now called Anzac Cove on the Gallipoli coast, up to 30,000 people remembered the slaughter here 90 years ago. Then over 100,000 soldiers were killed during the disastrous World War I Gallipoli campaign. Australian and New Zealand troops, Anzacs, made up the bulk of the assault and suffered the most casualties. This morning, under a clear starry sky, the Prime Ministers of both countries spoke of their bravery and how Gallipoli came to mark the birth of the two nations. These young Australians, with their New Zealand comrades, had come to do their bit in a maelstrom not of their making. Over eight impossible months, they forged a legend whose grip on us grows tighter with each passing year. Out of catastrophe, each of our nations emerged with a new sense of certainty about our own destiny and our own place in the world. Over 20,000 British and Irish troops were also killed. In their memory, the Prince Charles read a psalm assuring hills. protection from harm. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh even from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. The campaign in 1915 saw the British army lead an attempt to take control of Istanbul by landing troops at Gallipoli, 180 miles to the north. But the attack was badly planned and organized, and the Turkish forces held their positions, resulting in much of the British and Anzac forces being wiped out. Ninety years on, as dawn broke this morning, the last post sounded. This is an emotional day for Australians and New Zealanders. Its importance and relevance has never diminished, with old and young attending ceremonies around the world. The Queen will attend a memorial in London later today, while Prince Charles is visiting many of the beaches and cemeteries where Allied troops died and are buried. Today also remembers the estimated quarter of a million Turks who also died in a campaign that achieved nothing except to tragically illustrate the futility of war. Keith Doyle. BBC News.